How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to a very special Dragon Fable video. So as you guys can tell from the title already, a little less than a year ago, I made a Dragon Fable class tier list video during May 2020 and you guys absolutely love the video. With close to 8,000 views and over 100 likes, you guys really like that sort of content. So I thought, hey, why not do another class tier list video for this year, April 2021, and let's see how it compares up against last year's uh, class tier list. Now, before before I start this video, first of all, I want to mention that uh, my criteria for looking at the class will be based off three main factors, okay? One, uh, for bossing, two, for questing, and three, for warring. I will not be taking artwork into account, and this list may or may not be slightly opinionated, so do keep that in mind. Uh, I don't think any tier list out there will be 100% fair because of people's uh you know inherent bias and that's perfectly fine you know so do take this uh tier list with a grain of salt and do keep in mind that these are the three criteria that i'll be looking at of course if you're going to look at a class that is meant for bossing then it's not going to be that great for questing if you are looking at it in terms of questing then of course it's going to suck right but of course some classes are good in almost all aspects and i will try and cover those i will also be giving my reasoning on why i decide uh which class belongs where also for this year's tier list we have a lot more categories right here so we have s plus s minus a plus a minus uh, b plus b minus c plus c minus d and last but not least f okay so this is to make the rankings a little bit more clear cut because last year i know that some classes were you know there were some classes that were just a bit better or just a bit worse than some of the other classes but not so much that they will fall into another ranking of their own and that is why i feel that uh, maybe this year we'll come up with a more comprehensive ranking by having more different ranks that we can slot the classes into. Alright, so with all of that out of the way, let us jump right into making the tier list. Okay, so first class, we have the Ascended Chicken Cow Lord. Now, this class, if you look at the skills, it is actually not a bad class. It is not weak by any means, but that being said, if you compare it to all of the other classes in the game, this class isn't really that good, especially if you compare against base chicken cow class whereby you can, you know, spam the mad chicken cow attack. This class does not see a lot of use and the only reason why it is not strong is not because that its skills are not strong, it's because there are many other classes out there which just does everything way better, okay? This is sort of like a jack of all trades class, I would say. It's not particularly good at bossing, questing, or warring for that matter. It doesn't have a niche use, but uh, it does a little bit of everything, which makes it not that great in my opinion. So for this class, I'll probably put it in the C- minus tier list, okay? C- minus ranking. Alright, next up, we have the Ancient Exosuit. So the Ancient Exosuit is a DC class that you can buy from Cicero store. For 1.8k DCs, this is a very uh, defensive-oriented class. You have uh, skills that can reduce your opponent's uh, boost, I believe. And you also have a shield. On top of that, you also have the skill that increases your all resist by quite a ridiculous amount. And that makes it really strong. It also has a wide variety of uh, skills like you can heal your HP, you can heal your MP, you have multi-hit skills, you also have skills that don't do that many hits and that is basically very, that makes it very good for handling all sorts of different types of bosses and uh, even though it doesn't have a lot of uh, damage like compared to the other classes, the defensiveness of this class is really where it shines. Okay, and I will probably put this class in the A plus ranking for now. Okay, so as I go down the list, some of it might change. So do watch towards the end of the video to see if I actually change my mind on where I put the classes earlier on. Alright, next up we have Angler. This, uh, do I even need to say more? There's only one skill, that's the attack button. So obviously this is going into the F tier. You don't even want to use this class at all for anything whatsoever other than the fishing mini game. Next, Avatar of Time. Now this is a calendar class and again, this is quite similar to Ascended chicken cow in my opinion like it is not a weak class by itself but if you compare against the other classes inside of the game it doesn't really excel at anything sure you have a pretty strong nuke that is unavoidable and i guess that makes it okay but is it really that strong i don't see a lot of people using this class and for very good reason as well you have some decent uh skills and all that, especially the Never Wars Cross skill, the one that lets you hit for huge damage and it being unavoidable, that makes it pretty good. But 
compared to the other classes inside of the game, this uh, it just doesn't really shine out in any particular area. That being said, I don't think it is a weak class and I do think that it is way stronger compared to Ascended Chicken Cow Lord. So I will probably put this in the B- tier. Next up, we have Archivist. Now, this is once again another Calendar class and this is actually a pretty strong class. It has one of the highest damage. It is one of the highest damage dealing classes inside of the game and there is also this... Uh, mechanic or trick that you can use to get uh, double ops and you can get like 10 double turns or something crazy like that so this no not 10 double turns sorry 10 consecutive turns or something crazy like that i'm not uh, entirely sure how to use this class this class is uh, quite mechanically complicated and relies on using your uh, regular attack okay you use your skills to buff up your regular attack and then you let your regular attack deal all of the damage that being said it's good for activating a lot of on hit specials and on attack specials it having four hits for his regular attack is good for monsters that uh basically you don't want to have too many hits but at the same time you also don't want to have too little hits either so four hits is just nice and some of its skills do have more hits if you need to uh if you're facing a monster say like a jahatia whereby you need more hits to break the skills or something like that so i would say this is actually a really good class for bossing for questing however not such a good class for warring definitely not such a good class at all but this is really one of the top tier classes for bossing if you actually have it and i will actually put this in the s plus tier okay it has very strong defensive skills as well on top of that it also has very strong offensive skills its defensive skills are pretty much a one once per battle use because of the super long cooldown okay but it is a very strong defensive skill that encompasses not only uh shield but also healing as well all right and with the high damage of this class i wouldn't i would assume that no battle would take super long anyways and with the extra turns that you get from it you really won't be getting hit that often all right next class ascendant okay so this class recently got buffed it used to be the weakest out of the three italian classes but that being said i would think that it is in a much better place right now for the three italian classes i would say they are more or less equal now after the recent balance changes so i actually put italian as a probably as an a plus class okay it has very strong damage and with the recent buff to it it's got a little bit of healing which helps its uh defensive powers its shield also got a little bit of a buff as well that's definitely good to see because ascendant rarely has any defenses whatsoever very very high damage but uh the recent buffs to its defenses make it a lot better okay this is a bossing class not so much for questing not so much for warring for questing it does take quite a long time for it to set up into the damage so it's not very good for questing doesn't have a super high damage skill right off the bat for warring as well so this is more of a bossing class next up we have the uh is this ancient shadow mage or is this just shadow mage Oh man, I always, you know, can't recognize. Let me take a look. Okay, I think this is the... Whatever, they are all mechanically the same anyway. Okay, Shadow Mage slash Ancient Shadow Mage. This class is basically a small, very small upgrade over the base class. Uh, if you have the Shadow Heart Bracer Artifact equipped, of course, all of your skills do 50% more damage. That is its only redeeming factor, I would say. But honestly this is not such a great class whatsoever i'll probably put it in the d tier okay uh same for ancient shadow rogue and ancient shadow warrior okay just a very very minor upgrade over the base class and that is only because the base class is uh you know that is only because it does 50 percent more damage with the artifact equipped now we have base mage okay base mage obviously this is uh one of your three base classes okay i will put it in the f tier you never ever want to use this for any reason whatsoever so yeah it goes in the f tier all right next up this is is this ascent is this evolved or is this the regular chicken cow let me see here i believe this is the regular chicken cow honestly i can't tell the difference uh no i think this is the regular chicken cow okay regular chicken cow class this one the only redeeming factor is its mad chicken cow attack you can spam its attack and its attack is 12 hits which makes it perfect for proccing uh, on hit specials okay so this is a very good class for proccing on hit specials or against monsters that you need many hits this is actually good and for that sole reason alone i would place it above evolved uh i would place it above ascended chicken cow 
Yes, believe it or not, because of that one very skill, it makes it better than uh, if Ascended Chicken Cow Lord. And this is really more of a class for bossing. For questing, I don't think the Mad Chicken Cow attack will do enough damage to kill regular mobs at level 90. So it's not that great for questing. For warring, definitely you don't want to use this because of its super long animation time and not so spectacular damage. Alright, next up, Chrono Corruptor. This is one of the weakest calendar classes uh, out there, unfortunately. And really, you don't want to use this even if you have it because I don't see a lot of use for it. This is meant to be a bossing class but it doesn't really excel in terms of bossing either. So I would skip this class completely and put it in the C- tier. Chrono Corruptor slightly better, no Chrono Mancer sorry, just slightly better than Chrono Corruptor but that being said, I do not think that it is such a uh, fantastic class by itself. It would be just a bit better than Chrono Corruptor but it is not one tier above Chrono Corruptor. Okay, so I'm still going to put this in the C minus tier, same as Chrono Corruptor. Next up, this one we have Chrono Z. Okay, Chrono Z is a uh, one of those weird combination classes. Okay, so this one you have to you know combine a few different skills in order to go ahead and make the full use of this class. That makes it very mechanically complicated to use. Um, but it is not a weak class in my opinion. If you know how to use it well, I've definitely seen uh, people using it uh, to take on some of the strongest in challenges and for very good reason as well. If you know how to use the combinations in the right order, then I think this is a very strong class. That being said, because it is a combination class, it does require quite a lot of setup time and because of that, uh, it's not really that great. It's something that you want to use for, war, uh, for bossing, not warring or questing because of its long setup time. But even for bossing, Okay, if you need a lot of bursts right off the bat, then you can't really use this class. So I would probably place this class um, one... No, I think I'll put it in the B- minus tier for now. It may go up a tier. I don't know yet. Let us continue with the list. All right, next up, we have Cryptic. Okay, so Cryptic recently got a nerf to one of his shields and one of his best uh, attacks. Okay, Cryptic used to be one of the top tier classes for both bossing and warring. And unfortunately, the... The shield got nerfed, which means it's not as great for bossing anymore. You can no longer loop infinite shields. And on top of that, the best uh, damaging skill for warring also got nerfed by a huge 50% uh, damage, no less. So this makes, uh, this is a huge nerf to Cryptic. In the past, it would have easily been an S plus class. But right now, after the nerf, <coughs> I would probably place it in... Um, it's either S- minus or A+, plus. it's in between somewhere here, I don't really know man. Is it on the same tier as Ascendant right now? Nah, I would say it's still a tier above Ascendant. Okay, simply because it still has a lot of shields, it still does fantastic damage without too much setup compared to Ascendant. Okay, so I'll actually put it a tier above Ascendant, S-, minus. okay. In the past, this is an easy A+, plus, but uh, easy S+, plus. but right now I would say it's uh, down a tier to S-. minus. Next one, Death Knight. Okay, one of the classes that recently got revamped as well. I think it's a very strong class right now. Okay, it has high damage skills. It also allows you to control your HP quite freely. That being said, it doesn't have an MP healing skill. Okay, so this uh, you can use for questing because of all of its HP healing. And you can also use it for bossing. Okay, but that being said, for bossing, this works spectacularly well against monsters that deal either darkness or light damage. Against all other monsters, not that great, okay, simply because uh, it's quite heavily reliant on using the Death Knight items itself and the Death Knight items itself don't really give a lot of, don't give all resistance at all. If you have all of them, they give you 35 all, but, or was it 45? Okay, but anyways, I think it was 45. Okay, but even with that, 45 all is not enough to deal with most other bosses inside of this game. So if you're not facing a light or dark monster, then this class may struggle to perform okay but if you're facing against a light or dark monster then this is probably your best option of all the classes simply because you will almost negate all of the damage that they'll do and uh, with max light and dark resist using this class and all of its, uh, all of its items equipped they are the light and dark monsters even the hardest hitting ones are dealing like what one damage two damage to you completely negligible with the healing in this class you are getting a positive heal every single turn. But uh, this, that being said, this is very situational. So I will not put it in the S tier. I'll probably put it in the A plus tier. Okay. 
no actually the a minus tier because of how situational it is like if you're not facing light or dark monster or even good or evil monster then this class will struggle to perform quite a little bit okay but against light and dark monsters this is uh, one of the best classes in the game next up we have regular doom knight okay regular doom knight very strong offensive class obviously don't really have a lot of defenses apart from your void barrier and maybe your life calf okay so it is still a very strong class nonetheless and can take on most of the challenges inside the game it has some skills that do a bit more hits and it also has skills which deal lesser hits which means that it is perfect for taking on a wide variety of bosses whether you need more hits or lesser hits this class has it all with the healing and of course the corrupt skill that works against every single type of monster in the game giving a unique effect okay i would say this is really one of the best classes in fact it is also not banned from any of the in challenges which makes it great okay most monsters inside of the in also do not have an uh empty doom knight v2 mechanic so this class is actually really good for bossing on top of bossing it's also really good for warring because of its doom spike skill fast animation and on top of that high damage and being able to hit off the enemies at the same time very very good class uh, all around so i would definitely put this in the s plus tier next up doom knight variant one the very very infamous uh doom knight variant one okay this would have been an s class if the in at the age of time was not a thing inside of the game but unfortunately with all the newer challenges they all have empty doom uh doom knight v1 is basically banned from all of them because of how overpowered its one skill is and that is life calf so unfortunately you cannot put this class uh, too high because it is not even allowed to be brought into the hardest fights inside of the game that being said it is the best possible class for warring because of its super high damage skill even higher than doom knight v2 mind you and of course it's uh ability to heal and all that makes this a decent class for questing as well but of course uh, mana courses are a thing so you don't have an mp regeneration skill uh, for this but with one hit to kill every single uh, normal questing monster you don't need to heal MP that often okay so because of the fact that it's banned for most in challenges I'll actually put this as a S minus okay uh, I may drop it down to an A plus I don't know because the ban from the in is huge and that is really where this class truly shines and that is bossing okay apart from the in most of the story bosses in the game are very easy nowadays so you don't even need uh doom knight v1 but if you if a class is banned from the challenge you can't even use it then what even is the point of uh the best part of the class right if you can't even use it to begin with so i'm going to put it at s minus for now i don't think it deserves an a plus ranking uh simply because of the fact that it's banned it is super strong on its own and i think an s minus tier ranking uh really does it justice All right next up this one we have dragon lord okay dragon lord you obviously want to use this with uh, the Dragon Lord's Patience Artifact or Dragon Lord's Rage Artifact. There's literally no reason to use it without an artifact at all. So I am assuming that you have uh, either one or both of the artifacts to use. Okay, one artifact is for more defensive purposes, which is Dragon Lord's Patience. The other is for more offensive purposes, giving you more burst. Okay, this is a very good class for warring because of one of its skills, the uh, the one all the way on the left hand side, I think it was Dragon Soul or something like that. Okay, can't really remember. Yeah, high damage, very fast animation, very good for warring. Uh, questing, you can use that as well, but it is a little bit MP intensive, so ne not that great for questing. Bossing, really good class because it has a lot of survivability. You have a very strong heal, you have a shield, and you have a uh, the Earth Dragon Spirit, the one that cuts down your damage by cuts uh, enemy damage by a lot. So all of that makes it a very strong class. You also have a blind and a minus boost skill. So very, very defensive class. And I will actually put this class in the A plus tier list. I don't think it's up there as minus just yet because some of these skills have quite a long cooldown, but it is not a weak class by any means. Yeah, I'll definitely put it in the A plus tier. Next up, this one we have Dragon Mage. Okay, so the Dragon base classes are in a little bit of a weird place. I don't really use them and I don't know how good they are. But uh, from what I've been hearing, they are not that great. And I don't think many people actually use them as well for anything for that par uh, particular reason. They are an upgrade over the base classes, obviously, and an upgrade over the Shadow 
base classes but apart from that they don't really excel in any particular field they are not fantastic for questing they are not fantastic for warring they are definitely not fantastic for bossing either so uh i would say the dragon mage base class i would put it in the c plus tier yep c plus tier Dra same for dragon rogue in fact i think dragon rogue is one of the weakest out of the three dragon classes with a buff to the dexterity stat i don't know how that class is looking but i still don't think it's that great and also uh this class did recently receive another buff by itself but i still think it's pretty weak at least from what i've been hearing right next up dragon slayer again another very situational class this is fantastic against dragons in fact the best class you can use against dragons okay apart from some dragons from the inn at the age of time this class is a uh, absolute crap at everything else okay not good for any other bosses apart from dragons not good for questing not good for warring and yeah because it is so situational and because of the fact that many of the in at the age of time dragons actually have an anti-dragon anti slayer mechanic that makes it not that great so i will probably put this in the c minus tier like honestly yeah c minus man if you're facing a dragon that doesn't have anti-dragon slayer mechanics s triple plus dude s triple plus but you know against everything else c minus okay uh next up it could probably even be a D, but you know, because it is so useful against dragons, I think it's a notch above the shadow base classes. Alright, next one. This one, I'm not sure what this is. I think this is the dragon warrior class, if I'm not wrong. So yeah, same tier as the other two dragon classes. Don't need to say more. Dimensional transphaser. Uh, once again, another F class, simply because this class does have a few uh, high, slightly higher than average uh higher than normal average damage skills but you cannot equip pets with this class you also cannot activate any on hit specials with this class which makes it absolute garbage so i'll put it in the f tier all right this uh next one i think this is jet pirate jet pirate is slightly better than regular pirate and uh jet pirate has a has a skill whereby you can you know inflict minus all to your opponent minus 50 all so that makes it really good you have some strong damaging skills you have a lot of blinds and a lot of shields very defensive class perfect for beast masters though guesses are kind of banned from the inn right now verly did say that it was a temporary solution to he could find out a better way of balancing guesses in the inn so this could be better in the future but for right now because uh, it mostly relies on guesses uh, to you know maximize its full potential it is still not weak by any means even by itself it still has a lot of blinds it still has a lot of shields for damage there is a little bit of damage inside of pirate but really not that much so for jet pirate i'll actually put jet pirate as a b does he deserve b plus yeah i think jet pirate does deserve a b plus okay next one uh evolved chicken cow lord okay this one is a tier below the regular chicken cow because once again it doesn't have the mad chicken cow attack that can spam i'll put it in the same tier list as um ascended chicken cow lord even though it is weaker than ascended chicken cow lord but it is not strong enough to be in a tier in the same tier as the uh regular chicken cow that's that's my opinion all right Next one, Entropy. Entropy, very strong class, super high damage, and uh, quite a unique class. I haven't really seen any class much like Entropy before. It relies on dots to deal most of its damage, but of course it does have strong damaging skills by itself. With a buff to Dexterity, I can see uh, Entropy being a really strong class. That being said, its shield is only plus 70 MPM, so I don't know how I feel about that. But, but even though the shield is kind of crappy at 70 MPM, it has a very fast cooldown. I think it's only like 4 turns. So, uh, 4 turns or 5 turns, I can't remember. Super short cooldown means you can keep spamming the shield. And uh, the shield also comes with extra 70% damage buff. That's crazy. Have you ever seen a shield like that? I think no other class in the game has a shield that gives you a whopping 70% damage buff. And you can use... Uh, the shield has almost half uptime throughout all of your rotations if you keep spamming it so this is actually a really good class because both its shield and its damage buff is in one skill alone okay so i think entropy is a really good class it's just that people don't really use it a lot and i will actually put this class in the 
as minus tier okay so it is a little bit reliant on darkness damage but apart from that few skills that relies on darkness damage the rest uh, of the skills that this class has really good damage uh, defensive skills not that great but still s minus in my opinion all right next up this is the regular pumpkin lot or, or is this the evolved pumpkin lot i think this is the evolved pumpkin lot okay evolved pumpkin lot for non dragon amulet holders, this is an S plus for sure, the best class that non dragon amulet holders that have. But this list is assuming you are a pay to win player, you have access to all of the classes in the game, access to all of the items in the game. So because of that, uh, evolved pumpkin lot, it is still a strong class for DA holders. Don't get me wrong, but it is compared to the other classes and the other skills that the that DA classes have available, it doesn't make it that great. So I actually put this in the A minus tier for. NDA holders, this is an S plus easily, easily the best class for NDAs. Okay, but for DA holders, then this one I would say it's only an A minus. Next up, we have the Eternal Epoch. Okay, Eternal Epoch, this is obviously a bossing class, very poor for questing, very poor for warring, but this is probably one of the best bossing classes out there. And uh, the fact that it is the best bossing class out there, this deserves an S plus tier. Okay, the setup time is a little bit long, but once you get past the setup time, man, this class just absolutely wrecks bosses. Okay, you have shields, you have buffs, you have uh, high damage, you have healing. Everything that you could ever want inside of a bossing class, you have it right here. Okay, once you get past the long setup time, this is uh, the best, one of the best classes for bossing. All right. Next up, we have Frost Moglin Armor. This is a little bit of a weird class, okay? Why do I say that? It's because it's one of the best classes for warring. In fact, it is the best class for warring if you are using the female version of the armor. That's right, guys. You heard me right. The male and the female version has some very slight difference, okay? I don't know why that is the case, but the female version uh, has a slightly, very slight the faster animation compared to the male version of this class. If you use Fruitcake Break, it is one of the best classes for warring possible. High damage, fast animation. For questing, not so much. For bossing, uh, you could use this for bossing, but you know other cl uh, other class other classes out there will do a bit better than this class for bossing. So the best warring class, I would actually put this as an A minus. Best warring class out there, but you can also use this for some of the not so good. Uh, boss fights okay you can also use this for bossing though not as great as some of the other classes uh gps okay complete uh rubbish of a class in fact this doesn't even deserve a d tier this deserves an f tier okay with the bug previously if you have the mark one version i i think it's rare already if you have the mark one version of the bug i think it could still be good with the insta kill skill but uh now that the mark two version is only available i'm, ass I'm assuming this is the mark two version and I don't even know if they fixed the bug yet, okay? But either way, this class is garbage, okay? Hopefully, it gets a revamp soon because it did cause DCs after all. This class has slightly faster walking animation speed compared to all the classes in the game. So maybe you can use that for getting around areas faster, but inside of a quest where you can't change your class, I can't see how this is useful at all, okay? Next up, Guardian. Okay, Guardian recently got a revamp as well. Okay, to make it a little bit similar to Archivist, whereby you have to re rely on your regular attack. Okay, that being said, do I think it's a strong class? No, I don't. Okay, I still think it is not that fantastic. And the fact that you actually have to have a membership inside of another one of the games makes this an even more exclusive class uh, to get. So this class is really meant for bossing, not great for warring, not great for questing. But even for bossing, there are other classes uh, that out tier it. I will actually put this a tier above the Chrono Z and Avatar of Time classes. I'll actually put this at uh, B+. Plus. I've seen some people use it to great effect before, but uh, you know, still not that great. No way, actually I think I'll put this as B-. minus. I don't think it deserves a B+. Plus. Yeah. I think this deserves a B minus instead. Okay. Next up, we have Icebound Revenant. Icebound Revenant, very good for bosses with uh, 200 ice resist or less. Anything with more than 200 ice resist, like the new Ice and Dragons challenges, makes this class completely useless. Okay, and the fact that most of its attacks are locked to ice damage, it really is a huge hamper to the class. This being said, ice is one of the strongest elements inside the game because of Ice Scythe's effect. Okay, but you know. 
the fact that bosses in the inn nowadays have more than 200 more than 200 ice resist okay this makes this class not that good and of course you know being locked to ice damage that is a huge huge hamper to the class i would actually put this class as a um b plus or a minus i would say b plus for now b plus for now it might get a buff soon i hope it gets a buff soon you know it is a proper dc class after all and the only reason why i want to use it is for revenant's curse okay but if monsters have greater than 200 ice resist then well this class really sucks okay next up katu adept man this is a super strong class you can use it for warring okay because of the red tide attack it's a crit for water damage it is locked to water damage unfortunately but i don't see a lot of uh, water resistant creatures inside of walls nowadays so that's okay on top of that for questing this is also decent the only downside is that you don't have a mana regen skill so this class is a bit heavy on the mana regen but for questing you won't be using it uh costliest uh, mana skill either so i would still say it's decent for questing because of the fact that you have the red tide you know for one monster and for multi for multiple monsters you have a strong multi-hit attack as well so this is actually quite a good class for both questing and warring okay apart from that this is a super strong class for bossing as well its final skill is a multi-hit auto crit nuke that inflicts minus 50 to evil resist before it even lands that's right guys it also has a pretty short cooldown so this is an insane class okay apart from its mana courses which can be circumvented because you can have up to five mana potions and on top of that you can also train your wisdom stat you can also you know uh eat your what's that called instant pierogi food item this is an s plus tier class guys s plus okay one of the best dc classes out there i highly advise you to get this class if you guys don't have it already i did use it recently to beat the ice and dragons challenge you guys can go ahead and check out that video if you haven't already next one master soul weaver class master soul weaver class very mp intensive and because Beltail soul weaver is a thing this is not that great okay and really because of its high mana courses uh it has to go in the a minus okay it's a good class by itself but you know if you have if veil tail soul weaver is a thing then this class uh just goes all the way down there's no reason to use this class over veil tail soul weaver but by itself it is not a weak class in my opinion i think it still deserves an a minus spot and looking at the other classes here i don't think frost morgan armor actually deserves a minus anymore maybe it goes down to b plus yep okay i think frost morgan armor goes down to b plus okay it's still a good class for warring but not for anything else okay so i'll put it in b plus necromancer okay necromancer has a few niche users very very defensive class but i can also dish out high damage as well that being said if you want to dish out high damage uh with this class you're really relying on the dots to deal most of the damage so it does have quite a lengthy build up time this being said it's a super super defensive class a lot of healing you have an auto stun skill as well which makes it very useful for certain cases and i think i'll put necromancer as an a plus class uh very good for warring um no very good for bossing sorry warring and questing not fantastic at all pa uh, ninja monkey okay so this is a another crap class and i will put this in the f tier okay i don't think i need to explain why next up ninja okay ninja after the dexterity buff to be honest we haven't really seen it much in action yet in fact at all i don't really see any videos on ninja on youtube anymore nowadays especially for the in challenges but ninja he has four freaking shields and it relies on dots to deal most of the damage which means that it doesn't have burst damage it relies a lot on uh it has very slow build up if you want to do maximize if you want to maximize your damage with this class but after the buff to dexterity i think ninja could actually be good more testing is definitely needed but i don't think it's a weak class you know the fact that it has four shields and the fact that it has so many dot effects after the buff to the dexterity stat i think this could actually be a good class and i'm going to put this in the a minus tier that's right guys this ninja could actually be a minus after the uh, entire dexterity buff still not that great damage but four shields guys i think it's super underrated okay super underrated class more testing will definitely need, uh, be needed paladin one of the tankiest classes inside of the game without a doubt perfect for uh, bossing absolute crap for warring and questing 
Okay, questing may be long quests, but the fact that it doesn't have super high damage skills means that there's a chance that you might not be able to one-shot the mobs. And apart from survivability for long quests, you also want to kill the enemies as quickly as you can because I don't think anybody wants to sit there for like freaking 5 hours because you take 2 or 3 turns on each individual monster. So this class, I'll actually put it in the A plus tier. And uh, come to think of it, maybe Ninja doesn't deserve an A minus. Uh, I'm on the fence about Ninja. I think people need to test it more with the dexterity buff, but maybe I'm overrating it as well. You know what? I'll bump it down to a B plus. Simply because it has four shields, okay, and simply because the dexterity stat got a buff. It could be a B minus. It could be a B minus, okay. If the dexterity stat buff is not as big as I hoped. It could be a B minus, but right now I think in my opinion it is probably a B plus. Okay. Uh Pirate Monkey, same as Ninja Monkey. Regular pumpkin lot. No reason to use this over Evolve. No reason to use this at all since uh Evolve Pumpkin Lot is a thing. So I'll actually put this in the D tier. Yeah, definitely a D tier. Alright, you definitely want to use Evolve Pumpkin Lot. There's no reason for you to use regular pumpkin lot. This one, uh what class is this? Is this Pyromancer? I think, is this Pyromancer? I think this is Pyromancer, right? Yeah, I think, wait a minute, I can't really see this class. Is this Pyromancer or is this the student class? Okay, I think this is Pyromancer. Uh, Pyromancer right now, I think Pyromancer, dis it, after the buff, it is one of the best classes. In fact, it is the best class to go up against Ice and Dragons, but there is just one challenge, guys. Okay, it has an inherent uh, extra 5 fire and ice resist, which makes it great for that challenge. But, you know, apart from that, Pyromancer, it has quite a slow build-up. But once you get past the build-up stage, Pyromancer can deal really insane amounts of damage. And it also has super strong defensive skills as well. So I actually think Pyromancer deserves an S- minus spot. Even if you're not facing against fire or ice monsters, I still think Pyromancer is a fantastic class. Okay, next up, this one we have... The uh, Ranger class. Ranger, one of the best classes for bossing by far because of its double turns, super high damage. But if you want to switch over to defensive skills, which Ranger definitely has, you have to give up some of your offensive power. Okay, that being said, it is by no means a weak class and it is not fantastic for warring or questing. But against bossing, I think it's a really good class. So I'm going to put this in the S- minus tier. Next up, this is regular rogue, I believe. Regular uh, base classes, I think they deserve to be in the F tier. Okay, Riff Walker. Okay, Riff Walker, after the buff, I think it's the same tier as Ascendant. Yeah, probably the same tier as Ascendant. Okay, not on Cryptic's level just yet, but I think it's on the same tier as Ascendant. Super high... Uh, burst damage but not a lot of defensive abilities it does have a little bit more defensive prowess after they added the healing to uh riff walker but you know it's not a lot of healing so i would probably still put this in a plus maybe slightly better than ascendant but not quite at cryptic level yet in my opinion next up chaos weaver okay chaos weaver is one of the newest dc classes inside of the game and this chaos weaver man Super duper high damage. Defensive skills, not a lot. You do have a strong healing skill that also has a purge effect if you have the uh, Soul Trap Vow available. On top of that, you also have a skill that lets you resist death and uh, being stunned for 3 turns, which can make it good in sticky, situa sticky situations. You can also pair that together with your Rebuke skill for ultra high damage. So I think Chaos Weaver is actually an S minus class. Of course, most of the damage comes from Gambit, which is a really, really high gamble skill. If you can uh, one shot the enemy, then I'll you would definitely want to use Gambit. But for most of the in bosses nowadays, because of how hard they hit, you can't really Gambit right off the bat, and that's where most of its damage potential comes from. So I actually put it in the S minus tier. Next up, Shadow Hunter, another combination class. Unfortunately, it is weaker than Chrono Z, so it can never be in a higher tier than Chrono Z, and that means that it is probably going to the C plus tier. Okay, I don't think it's weak. I do think that. Okay, I don't think it's super weak. Okay, it is weaker than most of the other classes in this tier list, but with a small buff, I think it will be good. I don't think it should be stronger than Chrono Z simply because Chrono Z is a rare calendar class and Shadow Hunter is not, but both of them are very me mechanically similar. 
Okay, I still think it should be a little bit weaker than Chrono Z, but it should definitely deserve a small buff. Okay, to his defensive abilities, in my opinion, if you buff his defensive abilities, I think it could be a good class. Okay, and maybe a bit of his damage output as well. Next up, uh, we have this is Shadow Mage, right? Yeah, Shadow Mage, same as uh the ancient Shadow Mage class. Snuggle Bear, Snuggle Bear, really crappy class. Okay, I'll actually put this as the F tier. In fact. This Snuggle Bear class is probably worse than the regular base classes because it doesn't have any good skills whatsoever. Snuggle Panda. Now, Snuggle Panda, extremely strong class because of how many of its effects are just auto hit. Like, you can ignore immobility resistance, you can ignore hit check. Super strong debuff, super strong buff, super strong skills, and unfortunately, it's a super exclusive class as well. That being said, uh, unfortunately, most. In fact, all of its skills are one hit from what I remember. So against uh, monsters that require many hits like uh, Drahatia, then this is not such a good class. But that aside though, uh, that is literally the only monster that I can think of that requires more than one hit, I think. Okay, that requires many hits for it to be successful. But this is such a strong class for bossing. Okay, warring and questing, we don't even need to talk about that because this class is not meant for those two things. But... For bossing, I think it's a very strong class with all its debuffs, with all its shields, and a stun that ignores immobility resistance. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. S+. Plus. Next up, regular Soul Weaver. Regular Soul Weaver is definitely above uh, Bill, um, Master Soul Weaver simply because of the Bale Tales of Ventil artifact. And there's no reason for you to not use Bale Tales of Ventil artifact with this class. So I'm going to assume that this class comes with the Bale Tales of Ventil artifact by default. Okay, so... You are using with Bale Tales of Ventil Artifact is a super good bossing class. Questing and Warring, nope. But for bossing, this is very good. Okay, it has a lot of burst damage, which allows me to take out even Wolfwing. You can check out my super consistent strategy on how to beat, beat Wolfwing if you haven't already. Okay, uh, the burst aside, it can take care of Braid Sun with the burst as well. But apart from the burst, you also have a super strong shield, 4 turn shield, and on top of that, you have a permanent damage reduction okay if you loop its skills properly permanent damage reduction for all um for every single thing okay so very very good class for bossing i'll actually put this in the a plus tier i don't think it's quite an s yet okay i but i think it's still very strong so definitely a plus uh ancient shadow rope or is this shadow rope okay same same tier d tier shadow walker of time now, another calendar class. This one, not many people have it and not... I don't see many strategies revolving around it. There have been some videos on YouTube regarding Shadow Walker of Time. And it's definitely a strong class. Two final skills that makes it very strong. You have the Penumbra and Atumbra skill, which allows you to, you know, just switch back and forth, gaining more defenses, reducing cooldowns and all that. So if people actually know how to use this class and more people actually have access to this class, I think it'll be in a lot better spot, but... I do not think it's a weak class. Uh, that being said, I don't have the class, so unfortunately, haven't really played tested it. Is it strong? Yes, it's strong. Is it uh super strong? No, I don't think it's super strong. Okay, so I actually put this in the A minus tier. Yeah, not quite A plus in my opinion, but A minus. Okay, uh, Shadow Warrior. We'll just put this here, same D tier. Technomancer. Oh man, Technomancer, fantastic class for questing. Fantastic class for bossing. Warring, not so much. Okay, you do need one or two turns to build up the damage if you really want to maximize the damage from Force Sword. But, very good class for questing because you have a HP healing skill, you have an MP healing skill. On top of that, super high damage. You can prevent all forms of healing from the boss with Vent Heat. And yes, high burst damage, high consistent burst damage if you can keep your mana low. Okay, so I think this is a fantastic class and... Uh, you also have the overdrive skill. Its shield cooldown is also relatively short. So this is really S plus tier, man. Technomancer. I don't know if it will receive a nerf. I hope it doesn't receive a nerf, but it is one of the best bossing classes inside of the game. Okay, next up, we have the Dragon Bite Epoch, the newest Epoch class inside of the game. Uh, it's a bursty Epoch. Okay, really focus around bursting damage. Okay, that makes it good for questing. Warring, not so much because its animation is slightly long. Okay, for bossing, I still think it's a good class for bossing. But is it on the Eternal Epoch uh, level of bossing yet? Not quite. Okay, not quite. 
This being said though, I would probably put this... Is this an S- minus or an A+. Plus? Hmm. I think this is an A+. Plus. It's not quite at the S- minus level yet. Okay, it doesn't have all the utilities that Eternal Epoch has for bossing. And apart from bossing, this class doesn't really have much going for it. You can use it for questing, sure. But it's not as efficient as some of the other classes. Okay, for warring, definitely a big no because of its long animation times. Time Killer. Uh, a lot of people say this is the third weakest calendar class in my opinion I don't think it is super weak because it has two final skills One of its final skills has pretty fast animation And even though I don't see a lot of people using this for warring I think you can actually use this for warring For questing, not so much um, Bossing, you can use this but of course there are better quests out there And this is really, this is quite an iconic class in the Dragon Fable community in my opinion Simply because the biggest YouTuber, Richard or the Ruin Shadow actually used this class for quite a long period of time as his main class. So, maybe it's just my inherent bias, I don't know. But I don't think this is a super weak class. That being said, it's not a super strong class either. But I'll definitely place this above the Chronomancer and Chrono Corruptor classes. Okay, I will probably put this in the same tier as Chrono Z. Okay. Next up, Talk Slayer. Okay, Talk Slayer, this is a very good burst class which makes it good for bosses with low HP. Okay, very, very strong burst, but not much else going for it. The shield is only a BPD shield which really sucks. Okay, uh, it doesn't have any defensive skills going for it either, unless you want to pair the blind skill with like a healing, uh, with like a weapon with a healing special. Then it could actually be good, but really, apart from its high burst skill, which after you use the burst, if you can't get the boss down, then you're pretty much in a little bit of trouble here. So this is meant for bossing, but for bosses with lower amounts of HP. Not that great for questing, not that great for warring either. So I actually put this in the B plus tier. Okay, this is A plus for bosses with like six or 7,000 HP and below. But for monsters with above that amount of HP, this is probably a B plus, okay. Next up, Underworld Epoch. Okay, so this used to be the strongest Epoch. In fact, I still think it's a super strong Epoch class right now, but it has received so many nerfs because of how ridiculously OP it is with its double turns. That being said, I don't think it is weak by any means right now, but after all of the nerfs that it has, I still think this deserves an S-. minus. S- minus or A+, plus. I don't really know, man. Even after ner the nerfs, I still think it's very strong because you can almost stack your double turns infinitely. Okay, you do have to refresh it every once in a while so that all of your debuffs don't stack too high. Minus 30 all is huge if you keep using the double turns, but uh, we weren't, even with that debuff and all of the nerfs that it has, I still think it's very strong, so probably still an S- minus for me. Okay, next up, Corrupted Doom Epoch. This is a... And again, another more bursty version of Epoch. More bursty than your Eternal Epoch and your Underworld Epoch, but less bursty compared to your Dragon Bite Epoch. Okay, this class has very high highs and very low lows. Okay, so after your you output and unleash all the damage, you have to keep in mind that this class doesn't have a lot of defensive uh, prowess going for it either. But by no means is it weak. I would probably put this in an A plus tier as well. Together with Dragon Bite Epoch, it's not on the same level as Eternal Epoch for bossing. And it's definitely not on the same level as Underworld Epoch in terms of the double turns uh, mechanic. But it is still a strong class. Alright, nearing the end now. This, I believe, is Base Warrior. So Base Warrior will put this in the F tier. Regular Pirate. Uh, slightly weaker than Dread Pirate, but... It's a very minor difference. I don't think it's enough to make it go down a tier, so I'm going to put it in this, as the same tier as the Dread Pirate class. And Zadi. Okay, Zadi, eh, quite a polarizing class. A lot of people think it's weak, and I do. I only half agree that simply because Zadi as a class by itself, I don't think it's weak. Looking at its skills, looking at its numbers, I don't think it's a weak class. But if you compare it to the other classes, they are just other classes that are better for the job. And that's why Zabi isn't uh, ranked so high. But I do not think it is a weak class by any means. It has a really good heal that encompasses both HP and MP. It has a decent shield and it has very uh, quite decently high damage uh, skills as well. So I'll actually put Zabi in the C plus tier. Okay. Uh, some people may want to rank it lower, but you know my opinion is that Zabi is probably a C plus tier. 
So that being said, this is my Dragon Fable class tier list for April 2021 and this video was, uh, was recorded on 6th of April 2021 so anytime afterwards this video may be outdated and keep in mind all of this is my opinion only you can have your own uh, different opinion from mine I'd like to hear your comments below do you agree or disagree with this class tier list why and why not and as always, I thank you guys very much for your support. Let's hope that you guys can get this video to as many views and as many likes as the 2020 class tier list video. And yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more of such future content. Till the next time, I'm your host, Corban Gaming. Peace out.